Hello, my name is Stephen Blum. I am the CTO of PubNub. And I'm Craig Conover. I manage customer support. Awesome. Today, we're going to be talking about mobile push gateways, APNS, GCM, Windows uh, messaging service. Right. Some of the common questions that we have with our customers. Exactly. So um, the first question is, uh, how is subscribing to real-time messages different from uh, push, time, push notifications? Right. So uh, on PubNub, we have uh, a way of receiving messages over channels. And uh, that gives you lots of different options through uh, the myriad of mobile gateways, in addition to PubNub's network. Um, we connect directly to Google and Apple and Microsoft's push net notification networks. And we give you lots of fun ways to do this. First off, um, subscribing to a PubNub channel to the PubNub network is as simple as issuing a subscribe call. Uh, on the channel that you're interested in. But if you want to receive push notifications through the Apple Gateway, you use a device registry function uh, that's available in the iOS SDK. Or Java and Android, you have the Google device registry API method. And same with Windows. Right. Well, when it comes to uh, receiving the information, how is it different uh, in real time versus, uh, versus a push notification? So basically, when a device is active or uh, or the app is in the foreground versus the background right. in those scenarios. So how does that work? Yeah, so data is received differently uh, based on the state of the app or where the user is sitting on the app. For example, if we register for an APN channel on Apple's network, but we also subscribe to the app on a PubNub uh, low latency, high speed uh, data connection, we're going to be receiving the data on both of the networks depending on the state of the app, right? So if we're in the app and we're live, we're going to see, receive the data on PubNub subscribe channel, which means we're going to get really fast, low speed, or I mean super high speed and uh, uh, high reliability. But when the app is in the background, it's going to be coming a little bit slower uh, because you know Apple doesn't provide any guarantees and things like that. But it's in the background. And when that happens, a giant pop-up will occur on the screen saying, hey, alert, notifying the end user of you know, something. Yeah, so when the app is in the foreground, you will receive both the real-time message and slightly thereafter you will see receive the push notification from APNS or GCM. So uh, there is a method for each platform. Uh, in particular with iOS, it's did receive remote notification and you would just simply receive the message and then just swallow it. Just do nothing with it because you've already got the real-time message. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Very cool. All right. And uh, so uh, when, we're, when we're publishing these messages, uh, how do we format the message so that it goes to the real-time uh, subscribers and also a push notification is sent out for those that are not subscribed in real-time? Right. And we provide, uh, through a single API method, the ability to broadcast across all these networks simultaneously. Um, and the way we allow you to do that is through defining uh, specific keys in your payload. And in the payload, you would identify uh, the Apple key, the GCM key, or the Windows uh, gateway key. And it's simply prefixed PN underscore APNS for you know, Apple's network, or PN underscore GCM for the Google network. And with inside of that uh, object, you would paste the information that Apple is expecting to receive based on their standard docs. Same with Google. Right, right. And. Uh Within each one of those uh, specific uh, gateways, PNN, APS, and GCM, there are certain restrictions on data lengths. Oh, right. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the entire message can be up to 32 kilobytes because yeah. that's what we allow through yeah. our system. Mm -hmm. But for uh, APNS, it's two kilobytes. That's right, yeah. APS used to be 256 uh, bytes maximum. Apple was gracious and they increased the size. Uh, to two kilobytes, we get with Google, we get 4K, and with Windows, we also get 4K. Right, right. So in, inside of those specific sections for each one of those platforms, they have to, uh, the character length has to be within those restrictions. But the overall message that goes to the real-time channel can be 32 kilobytes. Precisely, yeah. Right. And finally, when you are developing uh, your apps and you're trying to implement these push notifications, you may uh, at times, you know, maybe you're not receiving push notifications, maybe you're getting some errors uh, or just unexpected results. Um, you would want to debug uh, what's going on. So are there any techniques for doing that? There are. The, uh, we had some foresight in developing our gateway services to the, you know, the, the big names, Apple, Google, and Microsoft. We have the ability to uh, send you feedback loop on a debug channel. And the debug channel is based on the channel name that the device was registered to. So for example, if the channel name was ABC, the debug channel name would be ABC-PN debug. 
abc-pndebug. Right. And you can subscribe <coughs> to this channel on the dev console, and then you can receive all the feedback. Was it successfully delivered over the Apple network, or was it a malformed payload? Right. And in order to see these, receive these uh, high-level debug uh, informations, you would need to, in the message payload that you publish, you need to indicate pn underscore debug colon true. Ah, uh, yes. That will indicate to the PubNub uh, push server to send any of that information onto the dash pn debug channel. That makes a lot of sense. So on your behalf, we'll publish the debug information to the debug channel. Right. It does incur a message cost. That's right. So that's why we've made it optional on a per message basis sure. to enable. Excellent. Cool. I think right. that, uh, that wraps it up. We did it. Excellent. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you.